Hey everybody, this is Ryan with Small Business Chronicles. We are back for another episode. And in this episode, we are going to be talking about small business tools. Like, like if you're a carpenter, if you're a baker, candlestick maker, whatever, you have a certain set of tools that you're going to need. A hammer, a scratch all, wax melter. But if you're a small business owner, we're talking tools, digital tools to help manage CRMs, uh, all sorts of different tools. So I have, I don't know how many more times I can say tools for it leaves is the meaning of the word. So before it does, uh, let me introduce Dave Erickson, Erickson of Screaming Box. He has been uh, good enough to come on the show and we're gonna, gonna discuss some of these tools that you guys can help leverage to manage your business. How are you today, Dave? I'm doing mighty fine. <clears throat> so, so tell me a little bit before we get started about Screaming Box and your qualifications and why my listeners should listen to you. This is the part where you get to be all, this is why. Okay, I'll try not to bore anyone with this. Uh, Screaming Box, <laughs> uh, we do a lot of digital development, uh, mostly technical uh, website development and mobile app development. Uh, our specialty is that we have a lot of business experience and we really approach it from the perspective of, what is your business challenge and how can we use technology to solve the business problem business problem or challenge that you have versus, hey, we're just gonna build something, right? So uh, right. we've had people come to us saying, I need to update my website. And we end up spending uh, three or four phone calls having a conversation about, well, why do you think you need to update your website and finding out what is their real business problem? And then having a, a business solution that addresses that. and Updating the website may be part of that, uh, or it may be none of it. It depends on what the real business challenge is. So that's kind of our focus. Uh, and uh, we also do team extension for enterprise companies where some of our developers in our pool uh, will go over and work for them for six months or a year. Uh, and, and we help manage all that and qualify everybody. Those are our primary uh, businesses. Uh, fair enough. That's enough qualifications for me to listen to you. And uh, so let's get started on some of the tools that you would recommend. As, as I'm running a small business, marketing agency, insurance company, e-commerce, whatever it is, what, what's going to be the first tool that you want to recommend to our audience? Well, I mean, I've I've had Screenbox is like my 12th business, and I've had some where I ran it myself. I've had some where it was me and another partner, me and five partners, however many different ones. And I've used a lot of tools over the years. They're always developing. The first thing when you're dealing with a business uh, is really find a tool that, that fits you. And, and the first place to start is accounting. As much as everybody hates it, uh, the only way you're going to get paid is to send an invoice. Uh, and yes, you can write an invoice on a Word doc and, and email it over to your first client. Uh, but the reality is if you're starting a business or you have a small business, you really need some accounting that helps you. And a lot of the accounting tools have really developed, particularly in the last couple of years, that make running a small business much easier than it was. I remember we started Screenbox 10 years ago we started with QuickBooks Online to do accounting. In all honesty, it was awful. Uh, it didn't do a lot of things that were needed. It had bugs. It, it, it definitely didn't work like the QuickBooks that you ran from your local computer. But over the last 10 years, they've really developed that software where QuickBooks, you know, even if you're a small business, you know, you're not paying that much for it. It can do everything. That that's kind of one of the issues with some of these tools as well. Some of these tools are so detailed and so broad in what they can do that a small business owner may get overwhelmed trying to, you know, just do the learning curve. It is, you know, you can start with other things. There's things like FreshBooks and Zero and a couple of other ones where it's much simpler. They're not as complex. They may not be needed. You, you may not need QuickBooks to run a freelance consulting business where you only have a couple of customers and it's relatively simple. FreshBooks may be perfectly fine for that. Even some of the freelancing platforms like Upwork now kind of have some of the accounting stuff built into it. Uh, so don't get hung up on it. But when you kind of start your business, you, you need to spend a little bit of time saying, how am I going to invoice? How am I going to do the accounting? How am I going to pass it? Obviously, the real pain in the ass is going to be the taxes. 
right? So a lot of tax accountants, if you have QuickBooks, you just give them a login, uh, they log in, they do your taxes directly from QuickBooks and they charge less, right? Is, is, is there any accounting software you would recommend staying away from? I haven't had any that are bad. I've had some that didn't fit after a while. So FreshBooks was a very good example. I started some small businesses with FreshBooks. It was actually good. I have a current company that I'm running on FreshBooks. It's very simple. We have a couple of clients and the billing is very simplified. Monthly billing, set amount. FreshBooks works great. The minute the business kind of changes into something more complex, FreshBooks may or may not handle that, right? Um, right. If you want, if you want one that's going to handle everything, no matter what size business you have, QuickBooks Online is probably the best one for that. But it could be a it, little pricey, right? That that that's what I was going to say is is one of the things that I've always used in a couple of my small side hustle businesses, and seems to work. So this might not be a very good recommendation. Is is Square has started coming out with some of those back end. So you have a payment portal, you have invoicing, reoccurring, subscription services, all of that stuff. On the tax side, it's still pretty weak. But at the end of the day, you still end up paying quite a bit per purchase. When you're yeah. looking at, at QuickBooks and the other one you mentioned, what does their pricing model look like? Well, I think QuickBooks is usually by user, right? And you probably only need two or three users um, and then it's a monthly fee. Uh, they have some other stuff with transactions. Like we do sometimes big transactions where we send out an invoice and then the customer pays for the invoice. They charge for that service, right? As a percentage right. of the invoice. Um, but some of them, like I said, it's where it, it kind of need, you need to do a little bit of research. Uh, example, FreshBooks, uh, is very simple with that. The, you can't do a lot with it, but it's very cost effective. If you're starting a business yourself with one or two people and you really need to keep your overhead low, FreshBooks is a great way to start. Uh, you know, most tax accountants are looking for two things. They're looking for a balance sheet and a P&L, right? Profit and loss. Right. FreshBooks can do that. You have to pay a little bit extra uh, to get the P&L out of it or the balance sheet. I don't remember which one you pay extra for. Uh, so when it's tax time, you take your subscription, you upgrade it, and it's like $30 total. You run your balance sheet. Uh, the accountant goes in, looks at it. Once he's done, you go downgrade your uh, subscription back down to like $15 or whatever. And you run the, the fresh books until next year when you need to do taxes again. Then you print your balance sheet out, right? So there, there's little things like that. But, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're just starting and it's all coming out of your pocket, you know, the difference between $15 a month for FreshBooks and, you know, $35 a month for QuickBooks Online, that can mean something, right? Right. Especially when you're loading up with all kinds of other tools on top of that to run your business. All right. So moving on from accounting, because those are your two recommendations sure. there, what's the next thing that you would focus down on for tools for, for the business owner? Well, part of that's going to start focusing on what is your presence, Right. Um, you know, most people have start off with some kind of website. There's a lot of website builders now out there. Wix, uh, WordPress is probably one of the older ones, uh, mm -hmm. and Squarespace that can help you build a website relatively quickly. Um, these can, these come at a slight price. They also put a burden on you of having to design it and do some things. But there's now a lot of tools happening because of generative AI and uh, open AI chat GPT, where it can be that you can start uh, building a website uh, by entering in, uh, you know, some some qualifications for your site. So there's a tool called AI Wise Mind, where basically you can go in there and say, hey, I would like to build a website and fill out my WordPress website. And so you would start a WordPress website. They have some tutorials. You can do it in about five minutes. Uh, you get your domain on it. And then you go into AI Wise Mind and say, I need a website. This is my business. I need these kind of pages. And I need it to talk about this. And it will literally generate a lot of that content and upload it into your website. So all of a sudden, your website's now a full website that has the basics in it, right? Um, 
and that that's a, that's good for a starting business that just needs to get something up. It, it is not going to be perfect. It is not going to be super pretty, but it can be done quite cost effectively and it gets you started, right? And as you do business, as you start actually doing things, you'll need to adjust your website. And so at that point, you need to kind of do some more work on it. Uh, but that's a, a cheap and easy way to get started, as well as some of these site builders. I've used some of the site builders for a small business. They take a lot more time than you would think. Uh, and, uh, uh, I, I, I'm trying not to sit over here and rant on site builders. And, yeah. and the reason being is, it's so secret, this this uh, this podcast is sponsored by Titan digital for all your marketing needs. Right. So, so that, that's a thing. And I work in marketing and, and websites I'm a little picky and peculiar about. You're right. The, the GoDaddy for simplified, decent looking sites, GoDaddy site builder is probably for my opinion, the best it's, it's very plug and play. You can get your, your thing up. You can get your site up and going. I think it's an extra 10 bucks or something like that on top of your already registration. So, so that if we're talking about that space, that that's kind of my recommendation. Uh, but your website, it's weird because websites kind of took a turn to where they were crazy ultra popular because they were new. Then nobody went and got one. Now with the rebirth of AI searches and stuff like that, websites are gaining and going back popularity again. So, so to build on a little bit of what you're saying, the one thing that I would say, watch on your builders and make sure they have a good SEO or search engine optimization platform, because otherwise you're throwing your money away. My basic thing is nobody's really on your website unless you're an e-commerce site. Your website is for your SEO and to build into those search results. So make sure whatever you use, you have that built into it. Yeah, I, I mean, and and the website, the the web builders are kind of bul bulky and slow, mm -hmm. and they, you know, they're trying to do a lot. Again, if you're starting a business, you're bootstrapping, you don't have a lot of budget, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have a lot of time. Uh, you need to get something up because yes. part of this is kind of a marketing bridge, right? You have mm -hmm. a website. It's basically if so, if you're talking to somebody at a trade show or a business meeting or a networking meeting and hey i'm i'm you know i'm bob the uh, carpenter right uh they're right. gonna say well bob what's your what's your url what's your website how do how do i find you oh just go to bob the and they'll go to bob the they're looking for validation they're trying to get right. some information are you somebody i want to do business with now Absolutely. if you have nothing or you have something that is just a sentence i'm i make carpentry it's not going to if it looked like or if it looks like it was built on an Atari in your brother-in-law's basement. That's exactly. another kind of bad thing. Yeah. You know, but if you you need something uh yes. and you don't want to spend a lot of money, you don't want to spend a lot of time on it, you know, a, a WordPress site, a site builder, GoDaddy is a good one. You get something up there. You have the oh, expectation that this is a temporary placeholder. It's yes. enough to kind of get your business started. You put a little content up kind of saying, this is, you know, how I do business this is what I'm looking for. If it's a decent site builder, it'll at least have like a form contact me. Mm -hmm. What are you looking yes. for? You know, you put your phone number on it or your email or however you want to get your spam. And, you know, it, it starts it. The other thing it does is it gives you a place to point. So if you say, okay, what's the next thing in the marketing bridge I got to do? Well, you got to have some social media. Because although right. people will look at your website for validation, the next thing they're going to look at is, you know, your Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever. So you yes. might as well set those up and point them to your website and kind of get it all linked together. This is stuff that a solo entrepreneur can do. You know, he's not going to spend a lot of time or money. There's some, you know, little tools out there that can help him like these site builders and stuff. Mm -hmm. Is this something that's going to be adequate six months down the road or a year down the road? Some of them could be. And I've seen some businesses where they started with, you know, I don't know, Wix and developed it into a very complex website. Uh, I even have a customer out in uh, Texas who did his jewelry store with a WordPress site and turned it into a huge e-commerce website. I mean, WordPress is like the last thing you want to do for e-commerce, but 
he did it right. and he grew it into something and you know he's doing a lot he's now kind of feeling the limits of it and you know he's had us come in and try to fix parts of it and make it work better but they just got so much inventory at this point that he's really now saying okay i, I gotta spend the money to to rebuild it into something that'll you know serve my future needs so oh, you know you can absolutely. take some of these things pretty far right but you can't they all they all bump into their limits at some point and it, it, it definitely like 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 and i don't want you to think that i'm against site builders because you're right when you're bootstrapping all those things that you brought up are a million good reasons why you should go to a site builder just it, it, but you're right they're going to hit limitations and they're still going to have some so if you had to pick two let's say that you had to pick two site builders to put on the top of your list which would they be well I think GoDaddy's, like like you said, is really good. Um, I I like WordPress, but WordPress is I don't know if WordPress is what I would consider a site builder. There is a no, lot of tools like Elementor that's a plugin mm -hmm. for it that kind of turns it into more of a site builder. Um, I like the flexibility of WordPress. If you're really if you're a, a, a solo printer who's willing to learn a little bit of technology. WordPress can get you some good results, save you some money, uh, and there's a lot to work with. But if you wanted to go a, a site builder beyond that, I really think Wix is probably the, the more intuitive one that someone can get on and start doing it. Site builders are one side of the equation. So you're starting a business, you need to throw something up, you need validation. Site builder is, is step one. Step yes. two is what are you actually going to say right right and i think a lot of people said in oh i need a website so i'm just going to go to a site build and they start building it and it ends up looking like a plate of spaghetti because they weren't mm -hmm. clear in their head what they actually wanted to say so they said oh i got to do a little of this i'm going to meander around here i'm going to kind of do this and they start putting together a hodgepodge of kind of content so the site gets finished and it, it kind of is messy and it doesn't really tell a clean story it doesn't ask for you know a call to action or anything like that so you know when you're thinking hey what do i need to do to start a website right um i would take the time to to think out what do you want to say and if you don't know the easiest tool and the cheapest tool to use for that is literally chat gpt you go into chat gpt and you say hey I want to start a website and I'm Bob the carpenter and I like to do carpentry and I need to figure out what content should I put on a website to talk about carpentry and to convince somebody to, to work with me. And it'll give you an outline of content and you can use that to start filling out your website, right? Um, you have to look at all the content. Whatever Chat GPT does, it is not an expert. It is not magical. Uh, it is not the greatest thing since sliced bread. It is a powerful tool if used well, right? But it can also put out garbage, right? Uh, so I love. I'm going to fanboy out on Chat GPT here just for okay. a minute. Chat GPT. I was hoping you would recommend this. We did not go over a couple things that I want to say about Dave is uh, he does not get paid by any of these companies to recommend these things. That's what I love about this. This is just his experience and all of his businesses working with businesses. He does not get paid to do this. Um, uh, so Chat GPT is one of those things that I have been dealing with since day one. I am a sci-fi nerd. I'm a low-key sci-fi nerd. Oh, I, I like too. I like I, I like tangible sci-fi, like like shit that's mm. really going on in life, like 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 you can touch. I can tell by your background, right? Um so I hopped on the AI thing real quick and I've been on there. One thing that I want to warn people about. If there's been only something around for six months, you can't be an engineer for it. So when people are saying that they are prompt engineer, they've had the same tools we have for the same length of time. It's a fancy yeah. word. It, yeah. it really is. But but uh, go ahead, Dave. You, you mentioned the last thing that you mentioned was you can get really good stuff out of there, but you can also get garbage out of there. So yep. we've we when we go on YouTube, when we flip through TikTok, shorts, whatever, 
there's a million videos of people telling us how to get good content. Would you do me a favor and tell me what is the bad content that we're looking for? What are the things that when it spits out, you should just go, no, because I don't think there's enough videos or people out there talking about what is the bad part of chat GPT. Yeah. Well, you have to be in a position with it. So I'll give you an example. Uh, for my marketing company, we just do a lot of content. We played with ChatGPT, having it write all the content, having it write part of the content, having it write outlines, having to do whatever. And then we had to look at it and say, where does it save us time? So if somebody said to me, hey, I need a 1500 word uh, blog post on uh, the top five uh, tools for writing content, right? That subject matter is a great chat GPT subject. If I had chat GPT write the entire thing, irregardless of what I'm going to use it for, right? And if I wrote it as a prompt that a person who hasn't used chat GPT writes, right? Then you'll get something that looks like an article that does that. The, the thing that people aren't doing is they aren't checking it and they may not even know how to check it, but they don't look at all the things that are being recommended. They don't think, is this something that's really applicable to what I actually asked? Because sometimes chat GPT will just bring something in and it has kind of keywords that match up with your query, but it actually isn't related, right? Yeah. Um, and so you have to kind of read through it. We found that in all honesty, it's much better to ask chat GPT to write you an outline of an article because by the time we edit an article that it's written in its entirely to get the voice, yeah, the where's context, the, where's the time I've saving? spent the time, right? I've already spent the time. Plus, there's some real questions about people accepting 100% AI written content, right? right? And there are people who are looking at identifying it and preventing it and all kinds of other things. I have found that the, the most cost effective way to use chat GPT in writing content have it do a, a basic outline. You know, if you're writing a 1500 word blog post, a basic outline might be 500 words. All you have to write is a thousand. You don't even have to, at that point, you don't even have to think about it. The structure is already there. And that structure of the article is really where the time saving is anyways. And then you're just hanging on the, the sentences that you know. And since you're the one working with the material, you know the context, you know the voice you want it to have because Technically, you're going to put it up saying it's my voice, my article. These are the things I recommend. Right. And so it just is much easier and much faster to do that. And if you do that, ChatGPT will save you a bunch of time on that. Website content is the same, right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, one of the things that I would say is, is I will be the first to go if there is ever an AI apocalypse. Because I have found if I threaten to turn it into a toaster, that it actually does a little bit better. <laughs> I don't know why. I, just like you said, like I do a lot of email exchanges. So a little bit of a pro tip here. You can take the entire thread of the four or five emails you've written and the replies to it, and you can feed it into chat GPT and it'll write you amazing replies to those emails, right? Yep. But the thing is, it's got a list of words that I don't know if you've noticed it likes to use that humans don't use, like warm regards, yep. bespoke. It calls podcast talks. It it does that. So so my thing is whenever it writes something, I've, I think I've had a little bit better luck getting long form content out of it. But but still, the thing at the end of the day is read it out loud. If yeah. you feel silly, it don't use it because and, a lot of the words that it uses, a lot of the phrasing and a lot of the structure, just it 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 doesn't nail it at all. Uh, the structure is where the weak. It's Achilles' heel is structure. It doesn't have a lot of creativity and structure. I can now read articles and I can pretty much say that was written by ChatGPT. Like I, oh, I've yeah, got enough yeah. experience with it. And, and you can see it getting flooded out. You know, the the thing that that sets an article, if you're you're a small business, and you're trying to get some people to recognize you and they're searching on whatever keywords and if they find your article, the thing that's going to make them want to do business with you is if the article has some real personality, if it has some humor to it, if it has some sarcasm, if it's ironic, something like that. 
and chat gpt is really bad at that right oh my I, go go just just as a pro tip stop pause this podcast right now and go ask chat gpt to write you five jokes about yeah. elephants or llamas or something it will be until it has to be original tell them they can't copy it it has to be original jokes you will learn real quick humor will never be taken over by chat gpt yeah yeah so and 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 that's a really important aspect of content that that people as they're using chat tpt forget right when they think that the content that they're putting out yes if you are a company where you're focused just on getting traffic from organic search in google and it's all about the keywords and it's all about you know putting dense keyword content out there to get you know yeah, ChatGPT can kind of do that. It's not great at it, mm -hmm. but it'll do it. But if most business people are looking to actually say who they are, what they're trying to do, what kind of customers they want, and that's where personality and voice really separate you and, and, and come out, right? That's how you can get Bob the Carpenter if he just has chat gpt writing some content about you know why wood is good or whatever it's not going to mean anything but if he writes it and tells a story from his own personal experience which chat gpt will not be able to tell right at that point he's then engaging his potential customers and they will say oh well i i need something like that or oh he's funny i want to do business with him that's really where the key is so again Chat DPT can be a great tool to help you. It's also great for researching. You want to write an article about this, uh, the makeup, what is the best uh, hardwood to make cabinets with, right? Chat GPT right. will be great. It'll get you a list of the five best hardwoods that are made for cabinetry. And you can look at that, taking it word for word for what they give you. You can do that. But as an experienced carpenter, you'll know there's other things. And so you start adding to that text that GPT gave you. And then all of a sudden you've kind of added another three, 400 words to it and you've made it your own. That will be good content. That'll be great content absolutely. at that point. Right. Uh, so, absolutely. Like I said, it, just read it out loud. Make sure it's good content. Like you said, structure is weak. So you can strengthen that up um, and, and do that. A couple handful of other things that I use chat GPT. Like I said, email replies. I use it a ton for email replies. Here's, here's one of the reasons why I found it's good for email replies. I miss things in emails. Mm -hmm. I will read it. I will get the wrong tone. I will misread things. And then one time I, I was doing that, it, I had this big, long exchange. I was talking to an appointment setter and we were talking to contract negotiations or whatever. So I just put all of our communication into chat GPT and realized I was reading it wrong. Uh, and then I had it formulate replies. I thought it was wrong. My ego wouldn't let me be wrong. So I started reading back and I'm like, well, damn, that was me. That was my fault. I, I didn't read it right. Uh, uh, so, so communication is one place that it's actually really good because if you give it enough information to know how to talk and what that is, it relies on the information that it has. Uh, another place that I found that it works really, really well for, believe it or not, is PowerPoint. Uh, just as you were saying outlines. If you have condensed, if you have a lot of information and you need it condensed down to put on PowerPoints, you yes. can feed it the long form information and say, hey, I need 12 PowerPoint slides out of this. Write me those slides. And it does a phenomenal job for that. Yeah. And that's also the same. Uh, another user tip would be I have this blog post of a thousand words. Uh, chat GPT, here is a thousand words for my blog post. Can you please write me a 280 character tweet about it? Right. Put in some e know. emojis and put in a link to the blog post and it'll spit it out. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I don't value Twitter hardly at all. Uh, so, you know, no. but it's a marketing tool. And if you want to mm -hmm. put something up, that's a great way to do it. That's a good use for it. Chat GPT's power, what I'm finding even for small businesses, actually for small business in particular, is the combination with uh, um, robotic processing tools uh, such as Zapier and Make, because yes. that gives that that adds some real power. Um, I'll give you an example. One of the things I really hate about social media is this concept of retweeting. Yes, it's part. Mm -hmm. it, it has to be part of your social media stream. You put out or, or original content, 
but you also need to retweet stuff um, or you need to put out content that's based on somebody else's news, right? You need to have some right. relevant news of the day. You can set something up without knowing any coding. Uh, it does take a little practice, but if you spend a couple hours practicing with, say, make.com, then what you can do is uh, you can use a, another tool called browse.ai, uh, which allows you to kind of scrape a website. So you go to your favorite news blog, uh, and, uh, hell, search engine uh, journal, and uh, you can highlight in the, the news section any kind of news. You just highlight it with browse.ai. These are the pieces of information I want. Browse will capture it. Then you bring it into make.com and you say, hey, feed this into chat GPT. Take the title and write me a 280 character tweet and reference the URL and stick it in, uh, and, and literally go to tw my Twitter account. You can link it into make.com mm -hmm. and post it. And once that's done, it just runs automatically. And once a day, it'll go find you a piece of news from Search Engine Journal, and it will automatically just put it onto your Twitter, and it's done. Those are fairly it, powerful tools, right? It it really is. And, and it's funny how our social media has now become automated. Uh, I know there's a lot of introverts out there that wish they could automate their social interactions. And this is one that you can do. So yeah, you, you can you can run a whole whole media campaign and never, never see another human being. Yeah. And, and some of it, I mean, depending on how you kind of work with these tools, you can make some substantial original content blog posts as well with it. It's it's limited. Again, they all have their limits. It's not a miracle worker. It's not, you know, magic. But, you know, you can get a bunch of work done. So, again, if you're starting a business and you need to make sure you have some marketing flow for your social media, for your website, using ChatGPT, using Make.com, Browse AI, a bunch of these other tools, it allows one person to do the work of three or four. Right. And it doesn't yes. mean that this work is going to be the same quality level as a human doing it. It isn't. It will not be as good. But you're starting a business. You're bootstrapping. You don't have money to pay these people. You have to do right. something to get started. These are tools that can help you get started, get movement going. Uh, and then later you can bring people in to add to that and up the quality and still have some of this stuff running in the background because you've gotten it tweaked and tuned where it's doing something and that perfect what it's doing. And then you add on top of it. Right. So that's right. kind of how I look at the, the, the benefit of these tools. They're allowing an entrepreneur to get his business up and running, get it kind of wobbling up on two feet without, you know, having to hire a bunch of people and spend a lot of money on that. They can focus their resources on the thing that matters, which is the product they're selling or the service they're selling. And this other stuff, they can kind of automate it as much as possible, get it built so it's not perfect. You know, if you're, going, if you're looking to produce perfect, you should not be an entrepreneur, right? No. You, you know, yeah. get it started, uh, get it walking, and then figure out how to make it perfect. All right, well, we're just about out of time. So, so what we've got is a recap. If, if you're going to have a business, the whole point of making business is money. You're going to have to make money. You're going to have to keep track of that money to, to keep out of jail and, and, and to be able to invoice uh, people and to collect subscription base. If you're in a subscription based business, which is big, you're going to need some sort of accounting tool. Uh, fresh books and quick books are our two recommendations to get started with. Uh, then you're going to need some sort of a presence online. Uh, website builders are good. You just need to make sure that you have a little bit of control over them. Get some SEO. They're going to look good. Wix and GoDaddy are good for those two. WordPress, that's kind of a next level. Takes a little bit of an investment. Mm -hmm. um, Chat GPT. As far as buy-in for ChatGPT, I wanted to mention it is a it, it's a big investment. It's a whole twenty bucks a month for however much you want to use it. So that that is a thing. And, so. and you can you can still get a lot out of the free version. Right? Oh, absolutely. It's limited, but you know, again, for doing simple basic things, the free version works fine. Yes, you 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 want to upgrade if you want to get deeper into it and have it have more capability, but. I still use the free version for a bunch of stuff like writing an outline for something. It's perfect. 
Right. Uh, so, so out of those three tools, that's a pretty good three tools to start a business. And these are pretty universal. Uh, mm-hmm. the, these are pretty universal tools, uh, that you could use to start any business whatsoever. Um, uh, would you have any, just let's do a rapid fire round. We got about four or five minutes left. Sure. Uh, just other tools people should go and look into, uh, and what they do. Well, I've mentioned Zapier and make, these are tools for doing automations. You would be surprised what you can automate with them. They basically work off of something called webhooks, where they hook into other programs and other things. But you know, even a Google spreadsheet uh, can be webhooked, uh, mm-hmm. so you can do a lot with it. They work with things called triggers. So if you know you add a new line to a web uh, uh, to a spreadsheet, it'll then do something like send out an email to that person in the spreadsheet or whatever you want to do. I think those those tools are very valuable. Um, I also think there's some marketing tools out there uh, that can help you do uh, different types of marketing. Uh, one of them is uh, PR Web that helps you do some free PR, uh, or at least it's a place to start doing some, some PR and people pick up on that. Uh, no. The other one is don't forget YouTube, uh, not just for promoting your stuff, which you can uh, get a microphone and a webcam, uh, make your own videos and put them up on web uh, on YouTube. But YouTube also is an invaluable thing that a lot of uh, entrepreneurs never had. They can basically do searches and get a person talking to them, helping them figure out how to do something right. Uh, absolutely. Cause you talk about, and I want to back up a little bit where you talk about zap and make, um, when you first start using these, you're going to feel a little bit like your grandparents program in a VCR. I promise you it is, <laughs> it, it is not the easiest technical thing to do, but YouTube is a great backer and kicker to that. YouTube is an entire university now of everything that you've ever wanted to know to be an entrepreneur. So I've got to back you up a hundred percent on that. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, starting a business now is much easier than starting a business was 10 years ago or think about it 20 years ago, right? Right. Uh, You have so many resources to use to help you. You have a lot of these tools. You know, the the biggest thing you have to really work on if you're starting it for yourself or you have limited capital, just watch your monthly reoccurring. Because if you have 10 tools and they all cost 20 bucks a piece, you're soon going to be spending three, four hundred dollars a month on just these tools. So pick the ones that really will work with you, set your budget and you can do a lot with very little. Uh, one more tool that I want to mention, and I want to know your honest opinion on, because I, I'm dipping my toes in this water and I've been experimenting and playing. There's a there's a program out there called Go High Level. So it I don't know if you've ever heard of it or if you've utilized that one nope. at all. I okay. have not. So. So it screamed multi-level marketing scam when I started looking into it. It is an all-in-one CRM. So what it does is it has it has a CRM, which is a customer management system, which is to keep track of your customers. It's got about every automation you should know. It's got a social media poster. It's got email. It's got SMS. It's got all of it. And you can get it for about 97 bucks a month, um, which replaces a ton of other tools. And then if you want to go pay like 500 bucks a month, you can resell, you can make your CRM and build it. It's kind of a Lego type CRM. You can go sell that to other businesses for another hundred bucks. So it's, and and we, we've been dipping our tools and playing, uh, dipping our toes in it and playing with it. So I did want to mention and round out go high level is something that I think people should be checking out. Uh, sure. I don't get paid. Uh, I don't get paid to recommend that either, but it, it's something that we've been going into. And I think as an entry level person, a uh, hundred bucks a month for a CRM because you've got a CRM, a social media poster, a content manager. You can manage your Google My Business from it. It's about a hundred different things, um, but it seems like it's it, it, it's a pretty good tool. Yeah, HubSpot is also a good one. The free version mm-hmm. of HubSpot is enough for a, an entrepreneur to start. What's nice about HubSpot is is that the export. Uh, can export into anything. So if you want to move up to to uh, next level or, or what was it called? Go high level. Go high level. You should yeah. be able to export whatever you put into HubSpot. Uh, and yeah. HubSpot's pretty powerful tool for CRM managing your leads, your oh, yeah. customers, and 
combine it with uh, zap or make and you can dump a bunch of stuff from your website or web scraping in there and start some mail lists and do a bunch of other stuff so th those are all good tools yeah all right, Dave, I've had a, a pleasure talking to you. It's it's good to, I, I'm a little bit of a tech nerd myself, so to, to get to geek out with all these programs, and I think you're absolutely right. You hit the nail on the head. It is easier than ever to start your own business. If yep. you wanted to be a plumber, you had to have a dad or a grandpa, or you had to go to trade school, or maybe plumbers are bad. I don't really want an uneducated plumber working on my house, but exactly. if you're... <laughs> But if you're looking at marketing, coaching, e-stores, tech stores, stuff like that, there's so much documentation on YouTube, yep. on on TikTok, on on different platforms, and then there's all these tools for you to use. And you had mentioned that you this is a Screaming Box is one of many businesses that you have started. So so I want to give you a minute. Uh, I gave it to you up front too. Tell us all about Screaming Box and how to get a hold of you. Well, the easiest way to get a hold of us is to go to screenbox.com uh, and uh, there's a contact us page. Uh, we handle all types of uh, development. We have a thousand developers in our network. Uh, most of them are located in uh, Europe or in South America. Um, and we also do a lot of business consulting, helping businesses, uh, mostly SMBs figure out how to develop technology to address their business challenges. Um, in addition to that, we also have marketing, uh, mostly uh, for text content, uh, for people who are looking to, to do text content or marketing agencies who just need text content for their clients uh, and need a flow of that. Uh, so we're more than happy to help out in those things. Um, I, a side note, uh, previous businesses included uh, an esports company, uh, I helped uh, build a, a brand called Fatality, uh, and so I have a lot of background in gaming and esports. Uh, and so I've, I'm working with some companies who are looking at doing some gaming as, as well, uh, including metaverse gaming. Uh, and I think that that's going to have an interesting future as well. I agree on the gaming thing. And my name is Ryan Shear, host of Small Business Chronicles. Uh, check out our sister so, show, Marketing Masters, hosted by the one and only Cash Miller. He's going to have uh, the leaders in marketing industry on there talking about uh, various things that you need to know. You can find us on every podcast platform there is. If I could staple this thing to a bathroom wall, I would. And I'm making it very, very easy to find. If you need anything that Screaming Box or Dave could cover, reach out to him. If there's anything that he can't cover, Titan Digital, home of uh, your full service marketing company, doesn't matter how big you are. We do everything from white label to, to high-end uh, advertising. So if you need anything like that, uh, support Titan so I can keep getting paid to babble into a microphone for the rest of my life because I think that's my goal. Uh, thanks, everybody, and see you next time on Small Business Chronicles.